Today we're speaking with the co-directors of the Breast Cancer Program at Johns Hopkins Kimmel Cancer Center, Dr. Sarah Swati Sukumar and Vered Stearns. Dr. Sukumar is also a member of the Executive Committee for SABCS. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Sukumar, at Johns Hopkins you are working on preclinical studies that target breast cancer treatment in the glands and ducts of the breast. Would you discuss how this works and why it has shown effectiveness? So this was a concept that I came up with about 10 years ago. Um, and the concept was that if the tumors exist in the ducts, and that's where the primary tumors appear, then perhaps instilling the chemotherapy or whatever therapy directly through the openings at the nipple mm -hmm. would allow the chemotherapy to concentrate its effects on the cancer while it will prevent the side effects to the rest of the body. So the concept was also that if preneoplasias exist in the rest of the breast ductal system, those would also be eliminated as a result of this treatment since the chemotherapy will completely inundate the entire ductal system. And so to test this concept, I began to try different compounds, different agents that could perhaps first of all, remove the cancer, and second of all, maybe remove the entire ductal system. Because if you remove the entire ductal system, you would prevent cancer. That's where the cancers arise. So it was very difficult to remove the entire ductal system because the breast is studded with stem cells and the breast goes back, even if a few of those cells remain in the breast. So after testing, so we tested several things. We tested tamoxifen, and tamoxifen would not act because tamoxifen needs to be metabolized in the liver to become active. So we used 5,4-hydroxytamoxifen, which is a derivative of tamoxifen, which is, acts directly. And that was very effective in eliminating tumors in both the rat carcinogen-induced model system for breast cancer, as well as for the HER2 new breast cancers. And then we tried several chemotherapies, carboplatin, methotrexate, 5-fluorouracil, doxorubicin, and indeed we found that all of them were pretty effective, but the most effective was doxorubicin in a slow release form, the pegylated doxorubicin or doxo. Uh, when we injected this through those ductal openings, we found not only that the small tumors went away, but the animals was protected against future cancers for a very long time, months after all of the animals developed tumors in the control group, these animals had not developed tumors at all. So it came upon us that this indeed might be an excellent way to be able to treat local breast cancers. Dr. Stearns, you have recently completed a clinical trial as a first step to test this concept. Will you describe it for us? Uh, sure. So um, obviously the results from the Sukumar labs were very exciting to us, but this is a new concept. We've never done any trial, so there are several things that we needed to overcome. Uh, but to me, it was very important to be able to perform whatever procedure we might eventually want to take into the clinic in a setting that uh, will be easy, that will be uh, well tolerated, and um, so there were several things that we, we had to set in place to do that. So one of the question is what happens if you inject anything into a breast to the nipple? This has never been done before. So, uh, so we built a, a, a kind of a new design of a phase one trial where uh, our first three women were um, really just to figure out the logistics. Um, I had talked to many people to try and, and make this happen. And, um, each person seemed to have brought to our attention an, an, another potential barrier. So we said, well, let's just test it with just the um, dextrose, so just a sugar uh, solution, which is the vehicle of the doxorubicin, and see what happens when you do that. It was very important for me to do this in um, an outpatient setting. Um, Dr. Su Susan Love has, has been able to inject um, doxorubicin into one woman in an operating room setting, and we didn't think this would be feasible um, uh, for us. So, um, so the study was in women who already had a breast cancer 
and we're uh, going to have a mastectomy. The women already had decided to have the mastectomy as part of their clinical care, and we asked them if they'll enter the trial, and what we've done in this trial, uh, in the first three women, we brought them into our breast imaging center where we do our mammograms, and uh, through um, at, at ductal catheters, we've injected a little bit of dye to visualize the ductal system so we can actually see a beautiful uh, picture of the, the ductal. It looks like a branching tree. Uh, and once we knew that we're in, a, in, um, in the right place, and many times it was the exact area where the cancer was, so you can actually visualize this dye around the cancer. And uh, we then injected, in the first three women, just this sugar solution. And uh, there were very, very few, if any, side effects. The women have uh, complained was minimal fullness in the area of the breast where we injected the solution, which was very brief. Um, the things that the rated as the most uncomfortable was the mammogram part of the, <laughs> of the, um, um, uh, the procedures. Um, and then once we were uh, done with this uh, three initial procedure in the first three women, we were very comfortable in starting with an injection of the um, pegylated liposomal doxorubicin solution, the doxel, and we've uh, built this a dose escalation schema. We started with a very low dose of two milligram, and uh, then we went up to five milligram and 10 milligrams, and this is all based on the animal data from the Sukumar laboratory. And uh, we've uh, been able to successfully get up to that level with minimal side effects or problems. Um, and then with the collaboration with our clinical pharmacologist, we looked at the amount of doxorubicin in one of its metabolites, both in blood, plasma, and in the breast tissue. And what we've seen is that you've seen a high concentration of the doxorubicin within the breast, and very little actually made it to um, the, the rest of the body. Uh, we've then added another group of women who are just getting doxor this doxel as part of their standard of care intravenously, and they got much, much higher dose of, of the doxel, 40 milligram per meter square, so it'll be about 60 or 80 milligram, uh, depending on the, um, on the height and weight of the woman. And we uh, asked them to undergo a breast biopsy to look at the tissue concentration. When we found this woman were very, very high levels of doxorubicin and metabolite in blood, but very little in breast tissue. So what that tells us is that you can deliver safely very small overall doses of what could be an active drug directly into your target tissue here at the breast and have very little in the rest of the body. Uh, and again, it was very safe. Dr. Sukumar, chemotherapy is not usually used for ductal carcinoma in situ because it travels through the entire body, but interductal therapy targets the chemotherapy to the lesion. How does this treatment compare to surgery or to radiation? So the, there are two aspects to it. One is that, is it possible in the way in the future to completely avoid surgery for ductal carcinoma in situ? Not only that, ductal carcinoma in situ may be detected in one place, but it's possible that that entire ductal system is a diseased duct and that it harbors other pre-neoplastic lesions elsewhere. We never see those. And so when they come back, if they do as recurrences, we don't know whether it is the first ductal carcinoma in situ that recurred or the woman got a new breast cancer, etc. But when you put something through the ductal system at the nipple, essentially it goes through the entire ductal tree. So that entire disease tree would be affected and would be, all of the lesions would be removed as a result. So the, the advantage of putting something through the ductal tree is very obvious. But why would you use chemotherapy for this purpose when it has not been used for localized lesions? We are not wedded to the concept of putting chemotherapy into the ductal system to treat those ductal carcinoma in situ. In fact, we have a very open mind on this, and we are testing multiple different agents we're testing targeted agents which target particular genes that are overexpressed in DCIS. We are trying preventive agents which also seem to have a therapeutic effect. So we're trying multiple different classes of agents really, antibodies, et cetera, to see what would be most effective. And then whatever is most effective and in the long term has the potential of being the safest, that's the agent that we will use to treat DCIS. 
Dr. Stearns, do you see interductal therapy as a potential way to provide prevention drugs like tamoxifen as well? So my, my hope and, and dream is that one day, uh, once we, we take the additional information that we gather from the, the experiments that Dr. Sycamore and her colleagues are conducting, is that we will be able to pick an agent, uh, frequency, uh, and so on, and figure out how to deliver uh, this, this agent in the clinic. And my thinking is right now the agents that are available for prevention are tamoxifen or raloxifen, and women don't like taking them. Uh, we know, uh, number one, in the prevention setting, setting those are not life-saving medications. There's no overall survival benefit, so we take it purely to reduce the risk of a future uh, breast cancer. So uh, women who have hot flashes, um, uh, difficulties with vaginal dryness and other uh, symptoms may stop taking uh, this medication. We know that even women, women who've had breast cancer uh, who are prescribed tamoxifen and other medication up to five years uh, may, may stop taking it and adherence is a big problem. So, so to me, if you had a procedure that, again, would be um, well tolerated, that doesn't take a long time, that can be done in the outpatient setting, and let's say we came up with a model based, again, on the uh, laboratory test that would say that once a year for two or three years, you will have to have this uh, delivery of an agent that will eliminate those dangerous cells, and that's it. That would be my kind of my dream. Uh, I, I don't know if it's possible, uh, but uh, we're working towards it. And just to reiterate what Dr. Sukumar said, uh, we've started with agents that we know work against breast cancer, but we know that we, we're looking at those tumor-initiating cells, and we need to learn more about those cells and how to eradicate that. So once we figure out how to do that, I think we'll, we'll, we'll be able to take the, the many more steps in the clinic. Dr. Sukumar and Stearns, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.